Welcome to Library Tips, Tricks, and Reminders for your P4 year with Pharmacy Librarian Christina Seeger. As usual, I'll be working from the Pharmacy Resources Guide, but since you will not be on campus, or probably even on your own computer at times, I wanted to remind you how to get to it. So from the library's homepage, and again that's library.uiwtx.edu, you would go to Do Research and it has the little link of guides. Um, there are two ways to go. You can either go from the listing, but you will also notice that our guide is usually the very top of the most popular guides. In fact, it has never not been in the three years, three plus years that it's been up. So you can go ahead and click there. That then gives you all of the resources that you should need um, in one convenient place. Um, I want to remind you that my contact information is over here on the side. Um, both my phone number and my email, you can email me directly from there. Or you can just email me at Seeger, S-E-E-G-E-R, at U-I-W-T-X edu. So I want to start with the most asked question from previous P4 students, and that is interlibrary loan. Um, usually you will do a search and uh, we will do a search in just a moment so I can show you some things there but if we do not have access to an article a book a dissertation whatever it is that you need the best way to do to get that is to go through interlibrary loan and I have under these quick links um, you'll notice that not only do I have the library website I have a link directly to the uh, online library catalog and some other items um, and there is the interlibrary loan link. If you have not registered, if you do not already have an account, you would go ahead and do that now. Uh, use your UIW login information to log in um, and then once you are logged in you can either request items directly this way. You would just fill in the blanks. Um, cutting and pasting is fine. Um, and it also keeps track of what you've already done. So you can do a new request for an article, for a book, um, whatever it is that you need. Um, this just shows you the things that I have recently requested that have not come to me yet. Once books, um, articles, other items are received, um, you will get an email. If it is an article, most likely, probably 99.5% of the time, it will be available electronically and then you would just go to um, electronically received articles. Um, you can also track the status of your requests under outstanding requests um, so that you can tell where it is in the process to know if it's something that you should wait for. One of the things that I will tell you is that please don't wait until the last minute to be requesting things. Um, very often items are available at the Health Science Center and they are very quick to work with us. We can usually get things within 24, I would say, to 48 hours. Um, however, uh, sometimes we have to go out further and it could take longer. It could take a week to get. So the earlier you request things, the better chances you will have them in time. So some of the other things that I want to show you from the Pharmacy Resources Guide um, include the the main section of this guide really has the things that you will use um, kind of on a, a regular basis. So Access Pharmacy is here if you need Depiro. Um, StatRef is here if you need other books. Um, if you uh, come down here to Clinical Decision Support you will have links to your Lexicomp, Micromedics, Facts and Comparison, but I need you to remember that uh, passwords will not be on this page. So if they, if there are things that are only available to pharmacy, um, all of that information is available on Blackboard. But remember, even from this page, if you scroll up, you can get to your Blackboard. 
Um, so this really is kind of like one-stop shopping. If you don't want to go through the library links, then you can just go ahead and um, remember this a little bit harder to remember URL, but not too bad. Um, Live guides, think about it as library guide dot uiwtx.edu slash pharmacy. Um, the links to PubMed are here and all of the journals and other information are here. If you go into the tab called library resources, you can get directly into those without having to go through the catalog. Um, one of the other really important things for you this year is the NAPLEX review resources and so I have a tab specifically for that as well. Um, it includes the physical books that are in the library um, and then if you scroll down some online resources that are not library specific but again it's kind of one-stop shopping for you here. Um, remember that this um, print material is in addition to Exam Master, which I have listed here, um, Access Pharmacy, uh, remember which lets you do uh, topic searches, so uh, all of the things that are in Access Pharmacy you can then do quizzes from. In order to do that you will need to have a My Access Pharmacy account, um, and I can show you how to do that when we when we talk a little bit further in this in this tutorial. Uh, the other thing to remember is that Farm Prep, the Netflix review from ASHP, is available in StatRef. Um, they have the 2011, the 2012 is not in there yet, uh, but that's a really good way to just kind of get some questions and do some testing of yourself. Um, just to make sure you know where you are strong and where you might still need to study. Um, I have a whole tab on interlibrary borrowing, so if you need more information than just signing up and using the service, then that's where you would go. Um, to make it a little bit easier, I've also included a tab for the Health Science Center's uh, library, so that link is here as well. Uh, if we go back to starting points, uh, I want to make sure that you know that down on the bottom here, I have included the link to Google Scholar which will allow you to log in from off campus. The reason that that is important is once you are logged in uh, all of our resources are available to you. So if we do a search um, and we have the article here you can immediately get to that access. So it, it's, um, it really saves you a step. Um, it's also a way that I find easy. If I find something in PubMed, I'll go ahead and drop it into Google Scholar because even if we do not have access, there might be access available out on the web. So if we do just a quick search, and obviously I'm on campus and so I won't have to log in, um, if you click the little login up here, it will let you authenticate immediately before you do the search. Otherwise, once you do the search and you try to get into something that we subscribe to, um, it will make you authenticate then. I will do a simple search just for example sakes. Okay, so from here you can look and see anything that says full text available means that it's available through our subscriptions uh, at UIW. But a lot of times you'll see things such as, here's a PDF. Uh, that's not something that we subscribe to. It's something that's freely available on the web. Um, it's nice that it always tells you uh, what format it comes in because this one's a PDF. But if you look up here, this one is HTML. So it's just going to be a text document. Uh, make sure you're looking that um, this is a citation. So that is not an article. It's not going to help you the same way. If you go down and you find one that has nothing next to it, you can look on the side and it says um, no full text available. So that lets you know if that is the article that you want. Um, and again, this is just an example. I probably wouldn't normally uh, pull an article from 1965 um, while on rotation. 
But if you go, if you click on that, it should, if you give it a moment, take you directly to the interlibrary loan screen and it will fill in the forms for you. Okay, so we want to request it. I log in. And then as you see, the form is already filled out for me. I'm going to do a quick check to make sure it really is what I wanted it to be. Um, it's the 1965 article. Here's the, the title of the journal. The title of the uh, article tells me where I got it from. And then I can submit the request. Obviously, I will not submit this one because I don't want an article that old. Um, the really nice thing too about, let me get out of that, about doing your search in Google Scholar is you can kind of see what's available and just like PubMed you can do a related, related articles search. You can also tell a little bit more about the article. This one was cited um, over a thousand times so that's probably why it came up so high when I did such a general search. Um, is because it's it's highly cited but if you look you can also do related articles and kind of see what else is out there if you're going to do a much more targeted search um, if you're going to put in the keywords that apply to your patient you're going to get a better search than your related articles will be much closer um, this is very similar to what you can do in PubMed um, and I definitely recommend doing that there as well um, so sometimes you find the article it's not available this way but you want to see if we do have it available so let me get out of here we'll get back to our pharmacy guide and that's when you would use the electronic journals check so I have that available here you can also get directly to the library up here um, from this guide at any time so we will go to electronic journals here or we can do it here. This will give us um, kind of just an overview of some of the journals that we have or it will take us to the library list. So you, if you have a citation, you know that you're looking for a certain article, then you can put that, uh, the title of that journal in here. Again, just using an example. And it will give you some information about this. So we have this journal available from 1997 with the most recent one year not available. And the reason that that is important is usually on rotation you're looking for really current information. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't get articles from this journal. It means that we'll have to do it through interlibrary loan. Um, and again, sometimes it's a timing issue. If you need that article today, you're probably not going to get it. Um, if you have 24 to 48 hours or so to wait, then it's, it's worth it to go ahead and put it into interlibrary loan. Um, but that's just a really good way um, for you to check what what we actually have available. If you look on some of these others, this one is only available from 2010, but there's no embargo, which means that we should have up to the most current issue. Um, you'll also see that it's available in several different uh, sources, um, and so that get, gives you the option to choose which works best for you. Um, generally, it doesn't matter you're still going to get to the to the article, you're still going to get to the PDF, but if you have a preference, if you use EBSCOhost and you sign into an EBSCO account, your own personal EBSCO account, uh, you have a lot of tools, you can add a lot of things uh, to that, to a folder, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to keep track of things. 
Um, if you're not using EBSCO, then definitely it doesn't matter. So one of the things that's similar to that is when you have your Access Pharmacy account. So if you, again, go into Access Pharmacy, you're going to want to actually sign up for My Access Pharmacy. What that allows you to do is to save images, but it also allows you to go into the Naplex review. And again, you have several different options. You can go with the curricular topics. You can go by organ system. Um, you can do the top drugs. Uh, and you can do the Naplex review. The nice thing again about this is that this is all done in My Access Pharmacy. And so all of the testing that you do is tied to you and it's saved. Uh, this gives you the options of the different books that are available and you can choose how many questions you want from each just to start your test. Uh, this is very different than Exam Master. This is very focused. Again, it's just from the books that are listed here. The questions, however, should be very similar to the kind that you will find on the NAPLEX. Uh, exam Master allows you to go in and kind of do a mock exam. And again, you can choose topics and you can choose how many exam questions you would like. Some of the nice new things that it does uh, is allow you to just do an exam, for example, on the things that you missed. Um, so that you can make sure that you're getting those. Uh, but this is Access Pharmacy, and this is the Naplex review in Access Pharmacy. Uh, really, really easy to get to, really easy to do, but you'll need to have a My Access Pharmacy account. Again, you just go into My Access Pharmacy. If you are not already registered, it will ask you to register, and that's how you get in. So I have that up at the top in your uh, indexes and databases because, again, this is more than just NAPLEX review. Um, and then I have it again under the NAPLEX review tab. One of the things I need to make sure that you know about the clinical decision support is that all of the passwords, if they're going to change, change in September. And that is because uh, all of the graduates should be out of the system by now. And our licensing only includes current students. So if you uh, get an error about that time, know that that's what happened. And again, all of the password information will be on Blackboard. So you just need to go back to Blackboard to get that information. Uh, Micromedics is one of the few that are available on your mobile device through our subscription. Uh, Lexicomp is not available mobily. If you need that, you would need to purchase it. If you decide to purchase it, please see Dr. Lopez. Uh, she usually has uh, contact with them and can get you a better deal. Um, so if you go, if you want Micromedics mobile, then you can get the different passwords. There are more than one uh, program from Micromedics. If you go directly to the mobile Micromedics, it will give you the the apps that are available. Um, drug information is freely available. However, drug interactions and IV compatibility require a password with our subscription. The passwords are available on this site, uh, but please know that they change quarterly. They just changed April 1st, so uh, the next change will be in July. And you'll have to update that each time. So it's always done from this site. Um, but this is another really good resource for you to have while you're out on your rotations.
Some of the other things that are available from the quick links include some links back to the university. For example, we have the instructional technology tutorial. So if you're just having a, an issue with uh, some technology word, whatever, um, if you forget how to, to get into Blackboard because you're stressed out, then that's where you would find that. So all of that information. Um, the Fike School of Pharmacy webpage is available from here as well. So this is just a really good place for you to start. Um, if you find that there is something missing from this page that you would really like to have on a regular basis, go ahead and send me an email. I believe you can also do comments down here to let me know that because I can always add the things that are most useful to you. Um, and that's it. Don't forget that if you have any questions, you can always email me. Um, you can also call I generally am better about answering email because I can do that whether I'm in the library or not. Please know too that Dr. Lopez is always available to you if you have drug information questions that are not necessarily library specific but more drug information. Um, and she also has uh, a lot of really great information on these resources. So make sure that you are using the tools that are available to you. Um, if you have any questions on getting to any specific resource, please let me know. Otherwise, I say to you good luck um, and, I'll, and I'll see you at graduation.